we're in St. Peter's Basilica, and we're looking at a famous early Christian sarcophagus. It's the tomb of Junius Bassus. Now, it's a little complicated because what people generally see is the copy that the Vatican has in their museum. But we're in the treasury, and this is the actual sarcophagus. And so Junius Bassus was a Roman prefect in around the mid fourth century. Right. We know he had his position in 359. So we're looking at a very early moment, soon after Constantine has made it legitimate to be a Christian in the Roman Empire, and Constantine is in the process of, in a way, making Christianity or leading toward Christianity, becoming the official religion of the Roman Empire, which will happen in the end of the 300s. So this is an early example then of a kind of openness and really a magnificent rendering of the iconography of the Christian tradition. Right, and what's interesting is that it doesn't look the way that we expect it to, in a way, because Christ is here in the center, represented with probably Peter and Paul, or two figures on either side of him. It looks likely Peter and Paul, yes. But he looks very youthful, like a young philosopher teacher. He's even holding a scroll in his hand. And he's seated and, and frontal, although not entirely frontal. So I guess what I'm saying is that things that we normally associate with representations of Christ, where he looks like an emperor who's older and he's got a beard. Here he's represented very youthful. He's, although he's seated and, and frontal, he does have a kind of naturalism and movement to his body. His left leg comes forward a little bit. His head is slightly turned. And he's got his foot above an image of a river god. Which is interesting because it shows Christianity surmounting the old polytheistic traditions of the ancient Romans. Using the iconography of ancient Roman pagan art in a new Christian context. I really am interested by the point you made earlier about Christ not fulfilling the physical attributes that we come to expect. And this is so early that, in a sense, those traditions hadn't yet developed. Exactly. They hadn't yet been, been really constructed and accepted. So this is a very flexible moment. Right, that iconography is being developed, and here he, he looks much more like a pagan figure in a way. That's certainly true because of the classical garb that he wears. And it's interesting stylistically because this sculpture is really showing a pretty high-pitched naturalism in terms of the rendering of the bodies, the contrapposto that we see the figure standing in, and even some of the, sort of the emotional attributes of the figures. There is a kind of naturalism, although we see the beginnings of a kind of early Christian style there are some hints of what's to come. The, f the heads are a little bit too large for the bodies. The bodies are starting to be a little bit on the stubby side. So it's a very interesting transitional moment. We see some other scenes from the Bible, and we're seeing early expressions of it here, but these are ways of representing these scenes that will become very familiar to us. So uh, we have Adam and Eve and on the lower, lower register. register. Right. And, so, and also other Old Testament scenes that would have pre figured the events in Christ's life, right? So that idea of saying that events in the Old Testament, such as the sacrifice of Isaac, prefigured Christ's own sacrifice for the salvation of mankind. So that way of saying that Christ's life is a fulfillment of the prophecy and the events of the Old Testament. What we're witnessing here is the invention of a new iconography. It's the invention of a new visual language for the telling of these critical stories. What I'm also noticing is just how deeply carved it is. It is essentially a relief sculpture, but the figures are very in very, very high relief. Some of them seem to be entirely separate from the marble ground. And I love these columns with, a, with capitals and bringing together of the classical and the beginnings of the Christian. Mm -hmm.